thanks a lot for having me here. So I will uh, talk about how to invest responsibly and save the world in, in my five minutes. And uh, the first part uh, is based on a paper that just came out in the JFE called Responsible Investing, the ESG Efficient Frontier. So let me just quickly explain what the ESG Efficient Frontier is. So um, nowadays, investors care about three things. They care about the risk of their investment, the expected return, and the ESG score, so the environmental, social, and governance. Let's just say it, how green it is. And so economists like to always put things in a two-dimensional plot, and now we have three things here. So what do we do? Well, we use the insight from finance that risk in return can be summarized in one number, namely the Sharpe ratio. So now we're down to two things, the Sharpe ratio capturing the expected return divided by the risk, and the, how green the investment is, the ESG score. So on the x-axis, I have how green the investment is further to the right is greener. On the y-axis, I have the Sharpe ratio, so higher is better. And every stock uh, out there has, you can think of it as a having an ESG score and a Sharpe ratio. But you can also form portfolios of stocks, and that can give you a higher Sharpe ratio even for the same ESG score. And uh, what smart investors will then do is for every possible ESG score, they can find the portfolio that generates the highest possible Sharpe ratio. And, and that generates this uh, hump-shaped figure. The top of the hump-shaped figure uh, is what we call the tendency portfolio with ESG information. So that's the highest possible uh, Sharpe ratio you can get, and it has some ESG score. Now, some of the people, who, the investors who only care about their, their financial return, they should pick that portfolio. Uh, now, investors who say, well, I actually want a greener portfolio than that, just be not because of the financial return, but just because I like a green portfolio, they should go out on the top right part. That's what we call the ESG efficient frontier. They should say, I'm willing to accept a lower Sharpe ratio in order to have a greener portfolio. And we, so we distinguish in the paper three types of investors. We call them the ESG motivated. Those are the ones who go out to the right. Then we call it the ESG aware, those who pick the portfolio on the top. The aware meaning that they, those investors actually recognize that, that uh, carbon emission and other ESG information actually could be useful information in predicting the profits. It could be that, that, that knowing a company is well managed in this way it tells us that it's going to be more profitable and they will use that information in a smart way. And then we have a third type of investors, we call them ESG unaware. They, they don't care about ESG, but also they don't even realize that it could be helpful in predicting the profits. And those investors might uh, achieve some suboptimal portfolio below that curve. So this is all seen from the investor's perspective. But when we have many investors, put them all together, what does the equilibrium look like? So that's the next question in the paper. On the x-axis, we still have the ESG score, but now on the y-axis, we have the equilibrium expected returns. And we show in the paper there are three cases. In one case is that most investors in the world are ESG unaware. They don't realize that carbon will be priced, perhaps, and, and it will affect the profits of these companies. And therefore, since investors don't realize this, the green companies are not as expensive as they should be. So buying green is a great investment. You can get a green portfolio, and you can get a high return. So that's the blue line that's upward sloping. If most investors are ESG aware, they're saying, we understand the, this connection to profits, and we, we therefore get into the equilibrium price, in that case, there is no connection between ESG and equilibrium expected returns. And in turn, if most investors are ESG motivated, that is, they are saying, we really want a green portfolio, whether it's a good investment or not, then in equilibrium, it will be downward sloping that higher, greener companies will tend to deliver lower returns. So then the next question is, does this save the world? And in fact, let's actually make it broader, not just the sustainable investment save the world, can anything save the world? And so in particular, I'll compare sus responsible sustainable investment with a tax, carbon tax, or, 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 or some rules. And again, the, the main mechanism that we can think that a responsible investing framework can save the world is through uh, the cost of capital. In other words, the people here in the, on the red scenario, they're not making a mistake. They're saying we're willing to accept a lower return for greener stocks because we realize that that lower return, the flip side of that, is that those green firms have a lower cost of capital. So it will be 
uh, cheaper to invest from the cost of capital perspective in, in, in windmills versus coal, and therefore over time we'll build more windmills. Another uh, form of, of impact from responsible investing is the active ownership that you can take a seat on the board and really affect these companies more directly. Uh, of course, the carbon tax uh, works through the cost of emission. So if you think about the boardroom discussing what should be the strategy of this company, you know, the carbon uh, tax will directly affect the profit of the company potentially. If they're polluting more, they pay a bigger tax. Whereas sort of the, the, the responsible investing is more through the cost of capital, so it's more indirect. Uh, you know, the advantage of the responsible uh, investing is that it, it doesn't require political will. It's something that investors can do on their own. The other frameworks do uh, require political decision. I think uh, probably there's a lot of, of, of bureaucracy in, in, in getting rid of all this greenwashing and so on. Probably the, 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 the rule-based approach that I think Europe, part of Europe is going down the, the, the route of, of having lawyers make lots of rules, I think probably will be the most heavy on bureaucracy. Probably the tax will be the, the less of this. I think that Many people say, oh, the tax is so difficult, we don't know what it, is, what it should be. It's actually easy. We start with a low tax, we keep ramping it up until the emissions is at the, a good level, just like with, that's how central banks set interest rates. They don't know what it should be. They start with some interest rate, they will take it up and down to hit inflation. So, so this is easy. Now, we, the problem with responsible investing and the rules, we can't really ramp it up or down. We can't say, let's do, you know, have a bigger effect. We can be responsible or or not, but then what if it's not enough? It, it's, it's more difficult to, to really hit the right target. And uh, I think I'm out of time, but there's also some issues of supply chains that, that we can see if it comes up in the Q&A. But uh, I, I look forward to uh, the discussion with my fellow panelists. Thank you so much.